everybody, this is Matthew, Garden Center Manager at Earthworks. Today I am standing in front of a magnificent stump from a sweet gum tree. Unfortunately, the sweet gum was not doing very well and it was dropping branches. And so before it completely fell, we took it down prematurely, a little bit earlier than it normally would have uh, naturally. And because we had this kind of unused space here, <clears throat> we decided to um, create a design that incorporated this stump into a table. So we are now in the process of making a tabletop for this. But I wanted to talk a little about the sweet gum because the sweet gum is a pretty amazing tree. It is uh, a vigorous, moderate to fast growing tree and is native to the southeast. Uh, what's really cool about this tree is it is a survivor. It can live in all kinds of adverse situations. Uh, when I was growing up in Indiana, I think that's zone five, uh, we had sweet gum trees up in Indiana, and when I moved to the south, I was surprised to see them down here as well. But uh, as a kid, I had a neighbor friend, and his father built a uh, rope ladder up into the tree so we could harvest the uh, sweet gum balls, which are these little green balls uh, before they're ripe with little uh, pointed uh, ends on them. So it looks like a little ball with all these little spikes on it. And we would use them with our slingshots when we were kids, and so we would fill up our backpacks and uh, we had ammunition for days on end and we would uh, have sweet gum ball wars. So I have very fond memories of the sweet gum tree growing up. Um, and when I moved to the southeast, it was, a, it was kind of a pleasant surprise that reminded me of home that down here in Florida that they grow as well. So they grow all the way from Indiana down to Florida in all types of different ranges, uh, pretty much toward the eastern side of the U.S. And uh, they have a lot of uh, historical uses. They actually have a sweet uh, sap, so much like a maple tree. Like when you think of maple syrup, obviously you just think of maple trees, but there are syrups that can be made from other trees. So the sycamore and the sweet gum are closely related. They both have sweet saps that you can make syrup from. I have not done this yet, but after thinking about this, I am tempted to uh, perhaps tap a few trees one day here in the future and make a little homemade syrup. But the sweet gum uh, does allow for us to make some homemade syrup here in the southeast. Also, the red maple, which grows here in the southeast, you can make syrup from that as well. And a lot of people don't think about making their own syrup, but really the process is not very difficult. We've been doing it uh, for a very long time throughout human history. So syrup is a very cool thing that you can do, especially with this craft movement that's going on here in our culture. Uh, it'd be really cool to provide some homemade syrup for your friends have some pancake dinners or something like that. So sweet gum trees are not known for suckering. Uh, suckering is a process where plants will reproduce themselves through a process where new plant growth will come off of the root system. So there are some plants and trees that do that very readily, and that is one of their main strategies for survival is to put up young, new growth um, away from the mother plant, so to speak, on the root system. I have not seen a sweet gum do that until this morning, so I became very interested in the sweet gum and was thinking about it today, so that's why we're making this video. But I'm going to show you here in a few moments the survival strategies of plants um, through the root system. So this tree was cut down, and from the roots it's put up new growth, and we're going to show some of that new growth that came up. Uh, maples do that. Actually, a lot of trees will do that when, you, when they're cut down and the stump and the roots are not removed, they're gonna, they have so much energy in the roots that as a survival, a last ditch effort, they will put up new growth around the uh, root system, which is actually a really fascinating way for a plant to overcome um, adversity. Uh, so in nature, you know, storms, lightning strikes, all things can happen, all sorts of things can happen that can cause a tree to fall. Um, not only when a tree falls, uh, could it start putting up new growth around the roots, but sometimes when the trees fall, they actually fall into the soil deep enough to where they'll start growing new growth where the tree is touching the ground. I've seen that happen in nature as well. So trees have a really interesting way of surviving through storms, lightning strikes, forest fires, all kinds of different natural disasters that happen. Without any further ado, uh, let me show you over here. It's probably about 10 or 12 feet away. <clears throat> now I will admit, I've already dug these up but I stuck them back in the ground because I thought of making this video after I dug them up. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you these, uh, this new growth that's coming off of uh, the root system of this tree. But my long-term plan is to try to salvage these as cuttings and then grow them as bonsai in pots. And uh, I'll 
keep you all posted as to how that works out. But let me show you down here. So I saw these sweet gum leaves. I was like, oh great, I got some seedlings here. I thought literally that these had been uh, from seeds that dropped in the spring and just were germinating late. So I came over here with a little hand trowel and I was gonna dig them up. But what I found is that they're actually attached to roots. They're at the edge where this bed meets the pavers and this new growth was coming out of the roots. So this is not normal for a sweet gum. It's not normal for a lot of trees, but as a survival strategy, these roots have energy. Um, they have buds and they have the ability to either create new roots, but sometimes when tragedy strikes, um, certain types of hormones and chemicals move throughout the plant to say, you know what, we're not gonna make new roots at this point. We have no leaves, we have no branches. We need to survive, so it puts up leaves so it can begin photosynthesizing again and live. Now, what's interesting is that these all, these all could have been roots, but you'll, you'll notice that you were getting two stems right here together. And then on this other one I found, I find this to be even more interesting. It's like a cluster of new potential little trees. So I'm going to cut off some of the bigger roots here, put these in a small pot, keep them moist for a time, and then see if all of these will develop into a little miniature cluster of sweet gums that I will keep in a container for some time. So this sweet gum provided a lot of shade for us over here in the garden center. Uh, we were able to keep a lot of our shade loving plants underneath it for many years and then it became problematic so recently we, we cut it down. Another problem that we were having is because the sweet gum makes those seed, those seed balls that are very hard, they were getting stuck over here in our skimmers. So with our pond, the, the tree was right next to our pond and those balls would get in the pond and then they would get pulled into the skimmer. So the skimmer is where we have the pumps for these water features in these koi ponds and it pulls debris that's floating on the top. So sometimes these sweet balls, sweet gum balls would get stuck in the pumps and they'd cause damage. The pumps would overheat, they'd get clogged with the sweet gum balls and it was kind of a nightmare at times when all those balls were dropping into our pond. So it's kind of been a, a love-hate relationship with this tree and uh, it's just got a lot of history here at Earthworks. So the tree is no longer here, however, I think it'll be interesting to see if I can preserve the genetics and preserve the life of this tree through its offspring that is putting through these, uh, these suckers that are coming from the roots. So I'll keep you posted. Sweet gum, very cool tree. If you're not familiar with it, you can look it up online. There's a lot of information, more than you'd ever want to read probably in one day. But it's got a lot of history to it. Uh, we've been using it for all types of different purposes. Uh, the seeds are actually very attractive to local squirrels in different birds, so it is a food source for uh, our native wildlife here in, in Northeast Florida. So we're gonna get the drone out and do a quick flyover at the edge of the wood line here at Earthworks Garden Center. So behind me, we have a mixed forest here of some local native trees, uh, including but not limited to sweet gum. We have the red maple. We also have some slash pine in there. There's also bald cypress growing. We actually have a canal that runs north-south alongside of us. And a lot of these trees really like moist ground, especially the sweet gums and the red maples. And of course, the bald cypress is very much in tune with very moist, mucky soils. We get these tall, long, skinny sweet gums and maple trees over here. And they're tall and skinny because they've all been trying to get to the top of the forest canopy as quickly as possible. So these young trees, relatively young trees, are tall and skinny and now once they get to the top of the canopy and they can get more sunlight then the branches will start developing more but they're all kind of uh, crowded for space but what's cool is that we know from recent scientific studies is that these trees you know we used to think of trees and plants as competitive that they compete with each other but that's not necessarily true there's been a lot of uh, findings lately that show that the plants in the forest are actually a lot more cooperative than they are competitive, which is really, really interesting to know. And they actually will give each other nutrients through their root systems and through the mycelium, the beneficial funguses and mycorrhizae that run through the forest floor, that they actually give each other nutrients. Species will share with other species. 
So when one plant needs one thing and another plant needs another, they'll actually uh, transfer nutrients back and forth through the beneficial mycorrhizae in the soil. So sweet gum, very cool, potential bonsai, we'll see. Follow us on uh, Instagram and our YouTube. Subscribe at EarthWorksJacks. I'll keep you all posted. Until next time, sweet gum.